Hi everyone, in today's video I am going to discuss one of the hottest topic for CMA, SEC and CA students. In this video I am going to talk about standard costing and variances. I am going to discuss the variances related to material, labor and overhead. So we start off with material and labor variances, then I will move on to overhead variances and obviously I will be doing a variable production overhead variance as well as the fixed production overhead variance. Every organization sets certain standard. For example, what should be the ideal amount of raw material to be used when manufacturing a product? How many labor hours do we need in order to manufacture one unit? And so on and so forth. So standards are always there. So if a company says in order to manufacture one unit, uh, maybe five labor hours are required and 10 kilograms of raw material is needed, that becomes the standard. And when they actually manufacture, they compare. We were supposed to utilize 10 kilograms of raw material. What is the actual usage of raw material? Is it more than 10 or less than 10? So if the standard set for raw material was 10 kilograms and in actual production, you utilize 12 kilograms, that means you have used more than the allowed amount of raw material. In this case, it's going to be an unfavorable variance. What we need to understand first is, what is the meaning of standard cost and what is the meaning of variance? First, you need to understand variance means the difference. For example, if my age is 70 years and yours is 20 years, the difference in our age is 50 years. So variance means the difference. Now, once you have understood variance, we need to understand what is the meaning of standard cost. Standard, as the name says it all, the company decides what should be the appropriate amount of raw material to use in order to make one unit. For example, 10 kilograms. How many hours of labor should be dedicated and used to make that unit? Let's say three hours of labor. So 10 kilograms of raw material and three hours of labor is the standard set for making one unit. So when we actually start production, it is noted that instead of utilizing 10 kilograms of raw material, we ended up using 12 kilograms of raw material. So that means there is a difference, there is a variance. We were supposed to use 10 kilograms, but we used 12. So there is a variance of two. Now we have to name this variance. Is this two kilogram which is used more than standard? Is this two extra kilogram which has been used? Is it good for the company? No way, because we were supposed to use 10, but we are using 12. That means this extra two kilogram is not good for the company, can be taken as a loss, but we call it adverse variance. On the other hand, uh, we were supposed to use three labor hours to make one unit, for example. But when we actually started making the unit, the labors consumed only two hours. So the standard time was three hours, Actual time is two hours. The variance is one hour. Now, is this good for the company? Yes, very much. Why? Because the worker saved you one hour and time is money. So we call this variance of one hour as a favorable variance. If you look at the question, the standard cost is given for one unit. Standard is always for one unit. So in order to make one unit, how much of material is required? Four kilograms. And the standard price of material is $10 means in order to make one unit we require four kilogram of material and it is expected that the material will cost us ten dollar per kilogram likewise the standard for labor is also given uh, six hours for one unit and we need to pay labor at twenty dollars per hour so the standards are given for material and labor we are also given the actual results. 1,000 units were produced utilizing 5,000 kilograms of material and 3,000 of our labor hours at $30 per labor hour. So for the given information, I'm going to calculate three variances for material and three for labor. The very first variance for material which can be calculated is known as material quantity variance, the short form I'm using, MKVU. Uh, this formula is standard quantity minus actual quantity into standard rate per kilogram. Now, this is the most important part. How to calculate standard quantity? Please note, whenever you are asked to calculate standard quantity, just check what is the standard quantity for one unit. 
in order to make one unit we require four kilograms so four kilogram for one unit and then see what is the actual production the actual production is 1000 units so what we do is in order to find standard quantity we look at standard quantity for one unit multiply by the actual production in units so four into 1000 will give you the standard quantity of raw material which is 4000 kilograms actual quantity is already given here 5000 kilograms so you minus 5000 kilograms standard rate is given in the question ten dollars now you need to pay attention here 4000 minus 5000 will obviously give you minus 1000 kilograms multiply by ten dollars so you will get minus ten thousand this has to be an adverse variance you can also call it unfavorable now why this is adverse please understand standard quantity means in order to make 1000 units in order to make 1000 units you were supposed to use a maximum of 4000 kilograms but instead you used 5000 kilograms the company was mentally ready for utilizing 4000 kilograms that is the allowed quantity for you if you are the laborer you were supposed to utilize 4000 kilograms in order to make 1000 units but you ended up using 5000 kilogram because you used more than the standard amount it has to be an adverse variance of 10,000 the second variance we can calculate for material is material price variance MPV the formula is standard price minus actual price into actual quantity now this is very straightforward standard price for material is given here which is ten dollars actual price is given here as eight dollar per kilogram so eight dollars into actual quantity is given as five thousand kilograms now look how to decide whether it is an adverse variance unfavorable variance or a favorable variance you have to look at what is the standard price the company was all set to pay ten dollars per kilogram when they buy material but when they actually bought material they paid only eight dollars that means they saved so if you're saving it has to be a favorable variance and look at the sign mathematically 10 minus 8 is a positive but here 4 minus 5 was negative 1000 10 minus 2 is positive 2 dollars into 5000 kilograms so you get 10,000 which is a favorable variance so what is happening here in material quantity variance you're making a loss of 10,000 you have an adverse variance unfavorable variance why it is unfavorable because you were allowed to use 4,000 kilograms but you used 5,000 because you used more than the allowed quantity you ended up making a loss of $10,000 in terms of money but when we look at material price variance standard price for material if you buy was $10 uh, standard price for material was ten dollars actual price was just eight that means we saved if we saved, that means there is a profit you can take it as a gain that's why we have a favorable variance so the third variance for material is overall material variance or you can call it total material variance so calculating total material variance life becomes easy if you already have material quantity variance calculated and material price variance you can net them off so you have material quantity variance which is uh, minus 10,000 minus is an adverse variance you also have material price variance which is 10,000 favorable which is a positive amount which is favorable now this is plus plus minus minus zero so this is your total material variance If you have not calculated material quantity and material price variance, 
and directly you are asked to calculate total material variance, still we have a formula for that. The formula is like this. Alternatively, uh, total material variance is actually standard quantity into standard price minus actual quantity into actual price. Now, if you notice, standard quantity is 4,000 and standard rate or standard price is 10. So, 4,000 into 10, if I make, I'll get 40,000. Actual quantity is 5,000 and actual price is 8. So, actual quantity is 5,000, actual price is 8. When I multiply 5,000 into 8, so this is 40,000 and 5,008 into 40. 40 minus 40 will give us 0. So guys, these were three important variances related to material, material quantity variance, material price variance, and overall or total material variance. Now I'm going to calculate three variances related to labor. The very first variance I'm calculating is labor rate variance. So the formula is like this. I'm using short form labor rate variance is equal to standard rate minus actual rate into actual hours. Now, if you look at labor, the standard rate is $20 per hour. Labors are paid $20 per hour. That's a standard rate. So, standard rate is $20. Actual rate, it says $30. And then, if you look at actual hours, 3000 hours has been used. So, I can multiply it by 3000 hours. So, what is happening now? Your standard rate, the company was all set, mentally ready to pay the laborers at the rate of $20 per hour. But when production started, they had to pay labor $30 per hour. So obviously they're losing here. You have to have an adverse variance, an unfavorable variance. Okay, so 20 minus 30 is 10. And when you multiply it by 3000, you get minus... 30,000 and this is an adverse variance why because you ended up paying more your standard rate for labor was $20 but you ended up paying $30 per hour and you're losing around $30,000 just by paying additional rate to the laborers the second uh, formula for uh, labor is labor efficiency variance now please note whenever the word comes efficiency we are talking about time. We are talking about the hours. So the formula is pretty simple. Standard hours minus actual hours into standard rate. Now, what we need to understand is this standard hours because the standard hours is not given in the question. We have to find standard hours. And how to find standard hours? First, we have to look at what is the standard time, the standard hours for making one unit. So if you look in the question here, six hours per unit, that's the standard. That's the standard for labor. We should be using around six hours to make one unit. All right, if you need six hours to make one unit, how many units were made? 1,000. So if six hours are required for one unit and we are making 1,000 units, so how many hours we should have used? So we should have used 6 into 1000, which gives me 6000 hours. These are my standard hours. This is the allowed time to make 1000 units. Actual hours, how many hours did we utilize? We utilized only 3000 hours. You got superheroes working in your company actually. Because what does this mean? This mean for making 1000 units, the actual production, you were allowed 6000 hours. It was a 6000 hours work. But your laborers did a 6000 hour job in just 3000 hours. They saved time and that would obviously lead to a favorable variance. Into standard rate, standard rate was $20. So 6000 minus 3000 is simple 3000 into 20,000. Uh, will give you 60,000 and obviously it's a favorable variance. Now here again, 
we may be asked sometime in the exams calculate total labor variance so what to do for total labor variance simple just net them off you already have labor rate variance we already have labor efficiency variance so if you have them your labor rate variance is uh, 30,000 adverse minus mean adverse here and your labor efficiency variance is 60,000 favorable adverse is minus favorable is plus plus minus minus sign of the greater number you get 30,000 favorable here again if you are not asked for labor rate and labor efficiency variance directly you are asked to calculate total labor variance the formula is like this total labor variance the formula is standard hours into standard rate minus actual hours into actual rate so if you look at standard hours standard hours are 6000 6000 hours standard rate is $20 actual hours are given here 3000 hours actual rate is given here $30 so 6 into this is 120,000 and this is 90 so 120 minus 90 will give you a favorable of 30,000 I hope you have understood the three variances of material and three variances of labor. Now I am going to discuss three variances related to variable production overhead. Some data is given here for variable production overhead. Again, in, in most of the variances question, you need to know what is the standard. Now here we need to understand when I say variable production overhead, uh, what do I mean? Actually, there are many variable production overhead. To make the example simple, I am taking electricity. Electricity is one of the variable production overhead. Okay? Because obviously, the more we use electricity, the more the bill will be. So, which means it's a variable expenditure. And if it is related to production, then it becomes a variable production overhead. So, standard for one unit is given, two hours at the rate of 1.5 dollars per hour what does this mean in order to manufacture one unit we need to use two hours of electricity and each hour cost us 1.5 dollars so in order to make one unit one table for example our variable overhead cost is three dollars this is a predetermined standard for variable production overhead. Now there are three variances calculated for variable production overhead. The very first one is the total variance. Variable production overhead, I'm using short forms, total variance, total variance. Formula is very simple. Standard cost minus actual cost. Now standard cost is something very important and the way we calculate is simple. Look at what is the standard for one unit, $3. The standard variable production overhead is $3 for one unit. We have to multiply this by the actual production. Actual production is 1000 units. So $3 is for one unit and if you're making 1000 units, how much should the variable overhead cost be? So if it is $3 for one unit and we are making 1000 units, so 3 into 1000 will give you a standard cost of 3000. Actual cost is given here very straightforward, actual variable production overhead cost, which is 3075. Obviously 3000 minus 3075 will give you 75 minus and this is obviously adverse variance. Why adverse? Because we thought what we estimated that our electricity bill will be 3000 but when the actual bill came it was 3075 so obviously the actual uh, expenditure the actual variable overhead cost 
was more than what we expected. Now this variable production overhead total variance is explained by variable production overhead expenditure variance and efficiency variance. The variable production overhead expenditure variance, variable production overhead expenditure variance is also known as spending variance. Spending variance. So you call it expenditure variance or spending variance, it's the same thing. Now the good news is, the formula is very simple. That's the reason I did not erase this, the labor variances. The variable production overhead expenditure variance is exactly the same like labor rate variance. Can you see standard rate minus actual rate? Here also I'm writing standard rate minus actual rate. See, standard rate minus actual rate. So the labor rate variance and the variable production overhead expenditure variance or spending variance, whatever you call it, the formula is the same. The only difference is here we were talking about st standard rate for labor hours. Here we are talking about standard rate for variable production overhead. Into actual active hours. Now I'm going to explain what is the meaning of active hours. What happens sometimes laborers are present in the manufacturing facility in the factory but they're not working. So if they're not working but physically they are present that is known as idle hours. So we only need to take into account active hours. So if they are present for 5000 hours but 500 hours they were not working they were idle so active hours is 4500. So here, let's see first what is the standard rate. Your standard rate is given here as $1.5. So standard rate is $1.5. Actual rate I need to calculate. I'm calculating it here. Your actual rate is actually your actual cost which is 3075 divided by actual active hours now the labor actually worked for 2020 hours but 60 hours were idle so 2020 hours minus 60 idle hours so i get 3075 divided by 1960 hours so how much do i get 3075 divided by 1960 i'm getting 1 0.569 and that's my actual rate 1.569 and then I multiply this by actual active hours active hours are here in my denominator 1960 hours so obviously 1.5 minus 1.569 will give you a minus amount okay 1.5 minus 1.569 it gives me minus 0 0.069 then you have to multiply it by 1960 hours okay so this into 1960 will give me around minus 135 and it has to be an adverse variance why adverse variance look at the standard rate we were we were all set to pay electricity at 1.5 dollar per hour but when the bill came and we calculated, it turns out to be 1.569. Our variable cost is more than expected for each hour. Obviously, we ended up making an adverse variance, which is an unfavorable variance. The third variance for variable production overhead is very similar to labor efficiency variance. That's why I didn't rub this. Look at the formula, standard hours minus actual hours. Here also, the third variance, which is variable production overhead efficiency variance efficiency variance and I told you whenever we are talking about efficiency we are talking about number of hours so formula is standard hours minus actual hours into standard rate per hour now please remember again I am emphasizing whenever we talk about standard hours we have to look at standard hour for one unit multiplied by the number of actual units so standard hour for one unit was two hours. 
can you see this is the standard time in order to make one unit we need two hours how many units were made actually this is the actual production 1000 so 2 into 1000 will give us the standard hours which is 2000 hours actual hours which are active hours 1960 already calculated into standard rate per hour is 1.5 dollars so 2000 minus 1960 will give you 40 positive 40 multiply by 1.5 will give you $60 which is a favorable variance. Now how to check your answer? As I told you your total variable production override variance is explained is divided by these two. So what you do is you add 60 favorable and 135 adverse if you net them off you will get minus 75. So if I, if I make a small diagram here, your total variable production overhead variance is minus 75, which is adverse. It is divided into two variants. One is expenditure variance, or you can call it spending variance. The other is efficiency variance. Your spending variance or expenditure variance is minus 135 minus 135 your efficiency variance is $60 favorable so this is 60 favorable so this is minus this is plus plus minus minus sign of the greater number this is greater number we're getting 75 so guys these were the three variances related to variable production overhead the total spending or expenditure variance and efficiency variance now I'm going to discuss the variances related to fixed production overhead. Guys, to understand fixed production overhead, we need to know what it is. Fixed production overhead, the classic example for fixed production overhead is rent of the factory. So if you look at the budgeted overhead cost, which is 20,000, is actually the budgeted rent of the factory. And what is the budgeted production? 1,000 units. The company plans to manufacture 1,000 units. So if you divide 20,000 by 1,000, you will get fixed production over at cost per unit. Fixed production over at cost per unit, which is $20. And why are we calculating this? This $20 is also known as overhead application rate. Fixed production overhead application rate. How do we calculate fixed production overhead application rate? Fixed production overhead, the budgeted fixed production overhead divided by the budgeted production. So budgeted fixed production overhead, which is the rent, divided by budgeted production, which is 1000. 20,000 divided by 1000 will give you 20. And the breakup is also given. 5 hours into $4 per hour, that also gives us 20. What is the meaning of this 20? I can call overhead application rate. I can also call it overhead absorption rate. What is the meaning of absorption? We need to understand why does the company calculate overhead absorption or overhead application rate. Please understand a business would like to recover all its cost whether it be material, labor, variable overhead or fixed overhead from the customer. So if a, a table costs us $100 this $100 includes some amount, let's say $10 for material, $10 for uh, labor, $10 for electricity, which is variable production overhead. How much of fixed production overhead should be included, absorbed in cost per unit? This is $20. In other words, it means the company's budgeted rent is $20,000. And what is the company's plan to recover this rent, to collect this rent? to uh, you know absorb this rent from the customer how the company will cover its fixed overheads the plan is that they will make 1000 units each unit when they sell for each unit they will recover $20 from their customers for fixed overhead which is rent so company's plan is very simple. They will make 1,000 unit. They will sell 1,000 unit. Each unit will recover $20 of rent, which is part of the selling price. 
So the company thinks that if they make 1000 unit and sell 1000 unit, each unit they will be recovering $20 as rent. So 1000 into 20, they will be able to recover their fixed overhead from the customers. So now I hope you have understood what is recovery of overhead, absorption of overhead. We don't, we as a business, we don't want to bear any cost ourselves. We want to transfer it to the customer. We want to recover it from the customer. So we have a fixed overhead, which is rent 20,000. How we're going to recover, whether we are successful or not. Let's have a look. The very first variance for uh, fixed production overhead is fixed production overhead total variance. And it's very simple. Fixed production overhead absorbed minus fixed production overhead actual. Now here again, absorbed means recovered. What is the company's plan? The company's plan is to charge customer $20 per unit for fixed overhead. So overhead absorption rate for one unit is $20. Actually, how many units they sold? They sold 1100 units. So 20 multiplied by 1100 will give you 22,000. And your actual fixed production overhead was 20,450. Now I want you to pay attention. How we got absorbed is actually overhead absorption rate, which is $20 multiplied by the actual production which is 1100 that's how we get absorbed now what is the meaning of absorbed absorbed means recovered the company's plan was to charge for every unit sold 20 dollars for the rent and they charged 20 dollars but they produced and sold 1100 so how much they absorbed absorbed means recovered so the company recovered in the name of rent 22,000 from the customers and in reality, they had to pay just 20,450. So they collected from customer 22,000 for the rent of the factory, but the actual rent was just 20,450. That means they saved up how much? 22,000 minus this uh, will give you 1,550. So you recovered more, you absorbed more, but you paid less. So this is a favorable variance. The next variance is fixed production overhead expenditure variance. And fixed production overhead expenditure variance is very, uh, you know, simple. Fixed production overhead expenditure variance. It's like this. The fixed production overhead expenditure variance is 99% like this. There's only one change. Have a look at this. We have... Budgeted fixed production overhead minus actual fixed production overhead. Now, when I say budgeted for one unit, it's $20. So, when I say budgeted, so $20, because it says budgeted, what was a budgeted production? This was the budgeted production. So you multiply it by the budgeted production, which was 1000 units. So 20 into 1000, your budgeted fixed production over it is 20,000. But your actual fixed production over it, which is given to you in the question is 20,450. So when you minus, you will get minus 450, which is adverse. What does this mean? See, the difference between these two, this is absorbed fixed overhead minus actual fixed overhead. This is budgeted minus actual. So actual is same. $20 per unit is same. The only difference between total and the expenditure variance is here the fixed production overhead rate per unit, we multiply by actual units. Here we multiply only by the budgeted units. So the first variance shows us how much we collected in reality, we collected 22,000 in the name of rent and we paid 20,450. So we saved. The second variance shows what if, if everything has gone as per plan, as per budget. 
So our budget was that we will sell 1000 units and we charge customers $20 for rent. So we would have received 20,000 as per original plan. But in reality, the rent was more. So had you made only 1000 units, you would have lost 450, which means $450 worth of rent you had to pay from your own pocket. The third fixed production overhead variance is known as fixed production overhead volume variance. By volume, we mean activity, the number of units made. Very simple. Formula is like this. Fixed production overhead, volume variance. Formula is budgeted volume minus actual volume into overhead absorption rate. So budgeted volume, how many units did you decide to make budgeted production? Production means volume, 1000 units. Your budgeted volume, budgeted production is 1000 units. Okay. Actual volume, your actual production is 1100 units. Into overhead absorption rate, this is your overhead absorption rate per unit, which is dollar $20. Now, 1000 minus 1100 will give you minus 100 into 20 will give you 2000. But please understand, this is important. This is a favorable variance. Now, you'll be thinking, although 1000 minus 1100 is minus, but why do we have favorable variance? The answer is... The basic rule of economics. And what is that basic rule of economics? It says the benefits enjoyed due to large scale manufacturing. Whenever you do large scale manufacturing, your average cost per unit comes down, which means your budgeted volume, you plan to make and sell 1000 units. But actually you made and sold 1100 units. Because you made more units, you sold more units, you collected more in terms of fixed production overhead, which is rent, remember? And the, the proof of this variance is here. Your budget was 1000, but actually you made and sold 1100 units. On each unit you got 20 extra. Because you made extra, you sold extra, you recovered extra in the name of fixed overhead. So that's why here, your budgeted volume, you, you plan to make 1000 units, but actually you made more. Whenever you make more than budgeted units, it's always a good sign. That's why it's a favorable variance. We are not studying mathematics that every time minus is not good. Here you have to use the concept, whenever your actual activity, your actual volume, your actual production is more than budgeted production, it has to be a favorable variance. Please remember this. Now this fixed production overhead volume variance is further divided into volume efficiency and volume capacity. And both are very easy. Especially the volume efficiency is just like labor efficiency variance. Let's have a look at the formula. I'm calling it 3A because that's an extension of this variance, volume variance. So this is fixed production overhead volume efficiency variance. The formula is very simple. Standard hours minus actual hours into standard rate per hour. Now guys, please remember, whenever I say standard hours, that means you have to start from standard hour for one unit and multiply it to the actual number of units. So standard hour for one unit is given here as five hours. Five hours for making one unit. And actual units are 1100 units. So 5 into 1100 will give me 5500 hours. Actual hours are given here as 5400 hours. Standard rate per hour is given here as $4 per hour. So you multiply it by $4. Now what does this mean? This mean your actual production, your actual production were 1100 units. Please remember this. Actual production was 1100 units. In order to make 1100 units, how many hours were required? 
this many hours in order to make 1100 units your workers should have taken 5500 hours but you know what a job which should have taken 5500 hours they completed it, it just in 5400 hours so they save time and you know time is money so that's that's a gain for us 5400 minus this is they saved us 100 hours each hour they saved four dollars for us so that gives you four hundred dollars which is a favorable variance and the last one 3b is fix production overhead volume capacity variance the formula is budgeted hours minus actual hours into standard rate per hour now guys when i'm talking about budgeted hours so five hours into 1000 will give us 5000 hours this is the budgeted hours we plan that the workers will work this much but actual hours the worker actually worked for 5400 hours into standard rate per hour is four dollars here again no mathematics common sense you planned that the workers will work 5000 hours but were they lazy no they worked more so you planned that the workers will work 5000 hours instead they worked 5400 hours when the worker are working more it's always good so you have 4400 multiplied by four dollars you get 1600 and that's a favorable variance this 5400 is not that they took more than required time if you want to look at their efficiency look at this variance which is efficiency variance they were supposed to complete a job in 5500 hours instead they completed the same task which should have taken 5500 hours but they completed that job in just 5400 hours that shows their efficiency here we are talking about the budget the company planned that the workers will work 5000 hours but actually they worked more working more is always good so 1600 is favorable now if i make a small diagram here to explain all these variances how they relate look we have fixed production overhead total variance and the total was 1550 favorable favorable this total variance is subdivided into expenditure and volume variance so this is divided into expenditure and volume variance your expenditure variance is 450 adverse which means minus 450 and your volume variance is 2000 favorable 2000 favorable now 2000 favorable and 450 adverse plus minus you get plus sign now this volume variance is further divided into efficiency and capacity now your efficiency variance is 400 favorable and your capacity is 1600 favorable so when you add these two both are favorable 1600 and 400 you get 2000 so guys i hope you have understood uh, the variances in this video i have covered three variances of material three variances of labor three variances of variable production overhead that makes nine and there are five variances here for fixed production overhead so nine and five 14 variances i have covered in this video so if you have any questions any queries relating to variances please leave a comment i will respond to you if you have not yet subscribed to my channel please subscribe to my channel that shows that you really value the work i do uh, please press the bell notification button so that you get my videos on a timely basis if you like this video please share it with your dear and near ones so that others can also benefit thank you so very much for your precious time